Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody, live from Harlem in New York City. Yeah, it's me, it's Alex, and this is The Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, that there is Lori Thompson. Hello, yeah. I was trying who, to fluff my uh, hair. Who, but... who changed her outfit so that she would look different the next week. That's right. I, felt, I want you to feel like and it's a variety show. Yeah. And she was talking about the sweater and how she bought it in different pinks. And it's hard to buy pink when you're on Amazon because there are many different levels of pink. Right. Like I got this really cool purple suit. It's vintage and it has it's dark purple. You know, <laughs> yeah, you you hit a button it plays smoke on the water. No, but it's got like accents that go from light lavender to darker lavender to pink and fuchsia mm -hmm. so i had to get, it's a for a funeral so the suit is appropriate but i wanted to give it a little bit of personality so i thought well i'll i'll do that but it's there is no standard for colors for fuchsia and lavender and pink they all bleed together they're all the same oh, thing. like four yeah huh? they're yeah. all the same see here's the thing again we're talking about the difference between men and women for mm -hmm. guys, there's like red, there's green, there's black, there's white. With women, oh. there's fuchsia, there's per, there's uh, mauve. Lavender. Uh. Yeah, we have. <laughs> you're right. You are so on target there. Yeah, we have ten different words for a shirt that we show you. Ten different words to describe guys the color. Guys have no, you know, relationship to that. You know? Yeah, I. You know, I do just because I used to do that travel thing on TV and mm -hmm. uh, we had to go and do outfits, outfits. We had a, a deal with Giorgio. There's a blast from the past. Yeah. And I got more acquainted with what looks to get what looks good together. Yeah. And you're supposed to take the most subtle color of, of piping in your garment and then bring it out with your shirt. Mm hmm. OK. All right. We got that down. Right. Little lesson. I'm a little, I've, I seem to be a little out of sync. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't matter. think so. You know, uh, anyway, well, here on this, so don't worry. Don't worry about it. Screw the audience. If I'm out of sync, I'm out of sync, all right? <laughs> as long Oops. as it's not a sinkhole. I can, you know, I can change the sink by doing this. Um, um, here I go. Watch this. Watch we change the sink. See, now the sink is better. And then I go back to this, and uh, the sink will be, let me just make sure here. Okay, here we go. I think the sink is fine. It's Good better one. than it was. Anyway. I wish you would come and work on my Netflix page. Okay, so we were talking about shirts. Then I mentioned... My, your breasts are looking good. Now, I don't, I'm not saying that because I'm, I'm coming on to her or because I'm even caring about the breasts, but I do remember when, Mar when you got those things, shall we say, augmented. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, and this and was years ago in San Francisco, and one day she comes to work, and suddenly <laughs> she's got Ooh. a rack. You know, ba, 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 boom. <laughs> and and before that, you were just very moderate, right? You just yeah. Oh, I was pretty small. I I wouldn't need, moderate would be a stretch, you know, because I and I wondered why, and it was because I was really athletic when I was in puberty and adolescence, and uh, so that you know boobs are just fat. That's basically what they are. Yeah. If you you know, so I thought, well, I'm going to buy a house, and when I can afford a house. Then I'll get the boots, and that's because I thought otherwise it would be a, it would illustrate priorities were out of whack. Yeah. So yeah, and I did a survey of every woman I knew well enough to know she had breast implants. I would say who did yours, and there was a Stanford-based plastic surgeon who kept his name kept coming up all the time. When you're going to have a procedure like this, ask questions. I mean, interview people, and. 
It was such a good job. Well, remember when they used to r refer to to uh, fake breasts or augmented breasts? Let me not yes. call them fake. Uh, yeah. uh, as silicone, and the fact was that they really got to a point where they weren't even silicone anymore. In yep. the beginning, what they did, like Carol Dota, that was the first person in San Francisco, made a big deal of the fact she had her breasts done. But what yeah. they did is they pumped in silicone into her breasts to make them yep. larger. And that, of course, was not a good idea because these things got very hard and uh, went went bad now but here's the thing so you get this uh, the, these uh, implants and they're really good ones right yeah they're great they last in 20 years oh well that's what i asked see when during the break i said to her are those the same breasts i used to know <laughs> you know <laughs> and you said no you had them redone but you had them oh. redone by a doctor that wasn't good he was not good he was mississippi i don't know what i was thinking Having plastic surgery. Yeah, in uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but, uh, the, yeah, the the tip capital of the world is Mississippi, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And plus, the other ones that were wonderful were above the muscle, and they looked like real boobs. Whether you're standing up, sitting down, bending over, they look like real breasts. Yeah. Um, the then this guy, but they get capsulated. So they feel like you've got like soy, you know, you have a bunch of kidney beans, bags of kidney beans in your boobs. I wonder with but, all that grabbing your breasts, I'm going to get declassified here on the, <laughs> on YouTube. But anyway, so, but, yeah. It, but yeah. So, um, and this guy with consultations and he came with a recommendation from my GP who'd had her boobs done. Mm -hmm. And so I went to this guy and he seemed very friendly, had a really good, great staff. He was a good salesman. That was it. Yeah. And so, but he wanted to do it above the muscle. And I didn't, uh, and I was act actively exercising at the time, push-ups. I did 200 push-ups a day as a way of keeping my abs. And uh, he didn't tell me that if you get under the muscle, you can't do push-ups again ever in your life. And whether or not I do push-ups, it looks, when I'm leaning over, like a fake breast. You can see the outline. You can, I, I know. I've seen that in porn where women will lean over and they, you can see this line. It's, you know? Oh, it's not even a line. It's, it's you can see the implant and it makes your boob go concave. It makes like if you're leaning over or even. If How I long mean, ago did you have the second one done? Um, four years four years and I've thought many times of going public with it because it's awful. It's mutilation, this guy. Yeah. You can there aren't that many plastic surgeons. You can't go somewhere and have it corrected? Well, they're they're livable and I'm married now. Yeah. So he's not gonna be he, he doesn't demand total perfection <laughs> in my boobs. But and they look good. They look good if you're just looking at me. They look yeah. great. Well, they look great. They look terrific. I mean, you know, and really, you know, you're not going to go around topless everywhere. So, no, you it's know. bad. But yeah. Yeah, but, but so you you got those, and after so many years, they did what? They started capsulating or something? You said they get capsulating, and it feels like there are small rubber pellets inside your breast. Were you told by your original doctor that eventually this might happen? Yes. Okay. And that's why you. Got, I was willing to take partial responsibility for the encapsulation because you're supposed to massage them every day. And I got to uh, where I uh, I know guys that would have come over and been happy to do it for you, or I women, women, women who would do it for you. Yeah, I should have developed a number system like you're on Tuesdays. Okay, you yeah. got the twenty fourth. Yeah. You know, and just had. Them, would you oh. please massage my breast for about two minutes here, so I don't yeah. get capsules. So you didn't yeah. do it, and so after 20 years, you had a problem. That's a pretty long time for a boob job to be good, you know, and it was maybe even 25. Yeah. And, and, and over the muscle is so much better than under the muscle. Why didn't you just go back to San Francisco and have the same guy do it? I don't know. I thought that would be because um, my husband and I weren't married yet, and he and I bitched about it so much. He said, "If you want them redone, I'll I'll pay for it." And so I, I didn't think, you know, I thought it would be kind of like uh, mean. 
to say, okay, and I'm also going to get them done in San Francisco. So it's going to be $4,000 more because of the airfare. Uh, but, but in retrospect, I would have. Yeah, yeah. But, but he made me they, retire. They look, they look fine. They look... Um... <laughs> Boobular. You know, I mean, you you would. Uh, I'm sure guys stare at you when you walk down the street. Right, which um, is, believe it or not, was not my intention. I just always wanted a perfect set of 34s to take to the beach. 34 C. Yeah, yeah. To take. But, uh, yeah. That's what. That's what I got. The uh, we 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 had one of these that we didn't record, or two of them we didn't record because we didn't have audio. And we got into a very good discussion about just um, the sexuality that you have po mm -hmm. versus me, the guy, and the sexuality I had. Right. And um, we talked about the fact that, that women, well, I love it when they say, you know, guys are different than women. No <laughs> shit. <laughs> you know, of course they are. Yeah, but then they, when they get out there with their, I call them generalizations, like men do this, women, no. That the individuality comes into play significantly in those, you know, statistics. Well, you know, they say, they say they'll be married and then all of a sudden the marriage goes bad and they go, where did we go wrong? Well, where you went wrong was by getting married. Yeah, it changes uh, you know, because, guy, you know, you have to accept guys are completely different from you. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of women expect guys to have the same set of standards that they have. But they have a, their set of standards are set by their biology. Right. And our set of standards are set by our bi biology. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can go crazy with sex because there's no price to pay for it. Exactly. There's no consequence. There's no consequences with women. There are consequences. I mean, what's the biggest thing going on in this country right now during the political campaign? It's the whole question of abortion. Okay. Um, now, I'm I, I as a guy, of course, I'm all for you being able to have an abortion, and I think uh, the government should not be, tell you what to do with your body and all of that. But I'm only saying that because I want to get laid. <laughs> But, yeah. but uh, and I'm also saying it because I believe that. But the fact is that guys can never have the same passion for the right to ab abortion in this country as women have. We can That's we can say yes, oh, we agree with it. You know, uh, I I don't know many guys who are you know against i don't know if people are for abortion you know no. <laughs> I, I i don't think a woman wakes up in the morning and goes you know i think i want to get pregnant today so i can go get an abortion right. nobody Those says abortions. that okay i should take a hobby out of that nobody yeah. wants abortion. i mean i'm sure you've known women who've had abortions i i don't believe in serial abortions that's you know there's yeah, some but women i'm sure who... you've known women who've had abortions yes what, and afterwards, how did they feel about it? You know, they didn't feel good. It's not a feel good thing. No, I think relief. Relief is the feeling they get more than anything. Yes, but they don't use it as a form of contraception. Some women do, I think. Really? I, yeah. Really? And, uh, and I don't know if it has, because access to birth control is so frowned upon. I don't know the mores of their family. But, yeah, I think some women use it as a form of contraception. Not many. Not many, but some are that some women are that cavalier, I think. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. But I, I, was, uh, I used to say that uh, men who don't believe in abortion, they, you can sway them by doing what the sobbing women did, wasn't it? They refused to have sex with any guy who doesn't support abortion. And pretty soon, every dude will support abortion. Right. Yeah. Well, the guys don't, most guys don't have any argument against abortion. I mean, here's the thing about abortion that bothered me a little bit, but it's only because of me and my experience in my life, you know, where I got a girl pregnant when I was 19, and she yeah. had the baby, and then she gave it up for adoption. Okay? Uh, yeah. And I never saw the kid. I do know it was a, it was a boy. Uh -huh. uh, it's a long story about how I knew it was a boy, but 
anyway, uh, I uh, after that, you know, I was for the ability for women to do this because yeah. I knew what we went through, you know. Yes. But uh, on the other hand, as a guy, I would like the woman, let's say you got pregnant by me it would never happen folks because in fact we've slept <laughs> we've slept with each other literally yeah it's just not in our scene the only the only thing that went on that looked like sex was we said let's make a video of us lying in bed and talking about how <laughs> hey look we can lie in bed together and nothing and then we turn off the lights and you hear us moaning and groaning <laughs> yeah right. uh, but uh but we were it was fine you know because we work together i i don't think of her in that nature at all, and we were such good uh, good friends. I mean, I don't. But want to let's spoil say it. we suddenly had some kind of thing, and you got pregnant, mm -hmm. and now you wanted to get an abortion. Right. Should you tell me? I would want to, but that gives you power to control everything. Really. This way, because I have the power to control your children. Well, that's, yeah, but I, I, it would be nice if I could know. Right. Because, after all, it is half mine. I mean, exactly. it, it, well, it's not mine till it's out in the world, but basically I'm responsible for half of it. Yeah, and, and you, you know, I... And I, I, I should have no say-so over whether you have the abortion or not, but I'd like to know. Yeah, I would want to tell you, but I know that other women in that position have told the guy, and then he created just myriad problems when she wanted to have an abortion. There are things you can do through the courts, and so you're taking a real chance. Oh, okay. To, All right. I, I, under I understand that, but the fact is that, that uh, if... if uh, it, the the thing is, if you were required to tell the guy, yeah, it might save us from having a lot of abortions for this reason. The guy would go, oh, no, please have the baby. I love you. And she goes, yeah. you do? <laughs> <laughs> or they might find they have enough to build on. Yeah, exactly. They but but you when you just go out and have the abortion don't tell him there's no chance you're going to have that discussion no exactly and that's why i feel like the man should be entitled to know before the abortion but i can understand a woman's reservation because that guy then okay that's a, i've never heard that explanation before yeah you know because i've often said that the problem that i always had was i would like to know if i had a, a woman who got pregnant i would like to know she was pregnant I'd yeah like, yeah i'd like to have the opportunity to say oh no let's have the kid i'm more than happy to marry you and uh, take care of the kid and all of that and that might change the whole nature of what you plan to do only because you thought hey the, the guy doesn't love me or whatever or yeah. this is not going to, yeah. And I think the, the uh, perspective is a lot different when teenagers are involved because that's something that's going to determine the course of their life. Whereas well, oh, absolutely, adults, absolutely. Yeah. I've got to tell you, uh, having that kid, uh, even though I never saw the kid, all I saw was a medical report and I could read upside down <laughs> uh, in the doctor's office because I went to see the doctor. And uh, she was giving up. In those days, you could give it up, and it was a blind abortion. Mm -hmm. You know, the person who adopted them, they just, they, I don't think if I went back to look for records, I could find them. And All we right. could scour San Francisco looking for guys that look like you. Well, I think it's Howard Stern, but that's another <laughs> story altogether. Um, but, I mean, I went through that, and that profoundly affected my life, for, I think, to this day. Uh huh. In my relationships with women and how protective I was of them not getting pregnant and asking every one of them, are you uh, taking the pill? Are you doing uh, something like that? Because if you're not, I'm using a, my own <laughs> form of contraception. So I was very responsible that way. But it, it did affect me. You know, and that's yeah. why to this day I don't have any children. 
Right. And you and yet you do. Yeah. And it's the idea that someone with my genetic material that's going to probably inherit a lot of traits from me is I didn't I didn't want to impose that on a child. I know how I can be. Well, no, no, but I don't know that a child necessarily gets that from you. I think a child gets that from you by being raised by you and seeing that behavior, but yeah. it's not genetic. In other words, you can't pass the crazy gene over to your kid. <laughs> I don't know, Ben. Like my biological grandmother, I've mentioned this several times before, committed suicide, as did three of her brothers. And uh, that I'm sorry, those odds are just really well, shitty. I would have liked to have had a kid because I think that the, you know the the Schwarzman gene had in it. Uh, uh, well, the, they were all musicians. Every member of my family was a musician. Exactly. I wasn't, <laughs> but I still went into show business. Mm -hmm. You know, so my kid might have grown up and wanted to go into show business, maybe yeah. because he grew up with me. You know, and and saw the the possibilities. Yeah. Um, and I think I would have made a great father, but uh, I, I've always, I don't know, I've, I, Marjorie's never had kids either. Mm -hmm. And I often yeah. I ask her, do you, does it ever bother you that you didn't? She said only slightly, you know. Yeah, it never said, That was a choice I made, you know. Yeah, but you know what? I've always thought that I would make a great stepmother or uh, a grandma. You know, I'm at the age now where I can think about that. And Rick has a daughter who I consider my daughter now. And uh, she was married, went through a divorce, and now she's back with the, the guy who's great. He tunes pianos. In other words, they were married, and they got divorced. And then they got back together. Good, yeah. good. Yeah, and they get along great now. And, and so... Um, Did they get remarried, or are they... I don't think it's official. I don't think it's legal. Or is but they're is she now? Is she gone from wife to booty call? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but they live together. She's That's so got... nice. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And yet, she, we were visiting them upstate New York, and uh, she dropped the bomb that they're that they're not going to have any kids. And so I'm going to have to be a grandmother some other way. Um, uh, I know. Yeah. Well, I, you know, um, I, I, yeah, I had a girlfriend. Remember the young girlfriend I had? Which no, one? It, it, <laughs> stop it. You know, the one that kept looking at television, a National Geographic special, and going, look, kitties. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, a young girl. Yeah, well, in that case, she came back 20 years later after we broke up, and it was a big romance again. Really? And then all yeah. of a sudden, she used that opportunity to break my heart one more time. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, well, you always brought, to, you know, home to the station. You always brought thinking women. I like the women that you dated, except for one. Yeah, and Which I like. Which one didn't you like? I didn't like the one because I thought she was using you, and I thought she was being not honest with you at all. Uh, I think she was called Fish Princess. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, you could you could have been right about that, but the, that was a very minor relationship in the it end. Was. It It became very well known because I referred to her as Fish Princess because right. she and her ex husband owned a fish company. On Fisherman's Wharf, and so uh, I, she still had, had was involved in the business. I used to call her Fish Princess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I gave and all it, my girlfriends nicknames. Yeah, for their yeah. for their sake, for their anonymity. Yes, exactly. But, but, but uh, I, I loved your Greek girlfriend. In fact, I what? talked to. Her, I loved your Greek girlfriend. Yeah. Well, that and was then, the one that broke my heart. I know. You know, I know that that and, was a that was an 12 year relationship, and in the 12 years we broke up 11 times. <laughs> See, that's what my relationship was with um, my teenage boyfriend. Uh, we were dated from 14 to 20, and uh, yeah, off she and was on, great. off and on, off and on, off and off on. And on. I know the only thing that changed people was say, the car. did you ever cheat on her? And I said, I don't know, because we broke up so many times that in those intervals when we broke up, right. 
I'm Which, immediately out on the street doing my my thing, you know. Yeah, you were free to. But who I felt pick. sorry for, believe it or not, were all the women I was going out with, who I had to say, "Well, we got to break up because I'm going back with my old girlfriend." Right. You know. It's, you know, there was always this looming ex-girlfriend mm -hmm. that you know, and yeah. and uh, it was it was I felt sorry for them. I felt they got short sheeted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and it's interesting with people that your family loves, like my family loved my first boyfriend and he was great. And from my perspective, he had a great rack and uh, he was very successful in insurance. But I knew him as a teenager working at Napa Auto Parts. So we grew together and then we had we had sex for the first time, each one of us. And then, of course, we liked it and continued for about another year and then we broke up and my mom my mom introduced him to another woman one of her real estate clients that he married and i was like mother what is your thinking what are you doing aren't you supposed to shill for me yeah aren't you on my side i didn't well i just thought <laughs> what are you doing to me man i mean she knew that we always had a bond and then it was like, oh, man. But I've let that go. You can tell. Man, we're running over, but this is so good, this stuff. It's you know, fun. It really that, is. To talk about, like, male generalizations, female generalizations. I'll tell you one funny story about my mother. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, she would, she, uh, she'd she come to New York, and, of course, she'd stay at my place, and I'd, I don't know. I made her sleep on the couch, oddly enough. You did not. Did well, that because I, I don't want you sleeping in my bed. I need my bed. I'm I'm a single guy. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, she stayed for about three weeks, and over that three weeks, there were any number of women who came through to say hello to me. Really. Okay. Yeah. So um, um, <laughs> she finally at the end of the. Three weeks, she says to me, you know, I'm just not very happy with you and the women that you hang out with. She said that? Yeah, and I said, well, uh, do you like any of them? She said, well, I really love that. I kind of like that Rhoda. She's really nice. I said, but that other woman, uh, uh, and I can't even remember the woman's name now. Her I don't like. Did she give reasons? Hmm? Did she give reasons? Well, I had to then say to my mother, Mom, you have to know this. Uh, the woman you don't like comes from very good stock. In fact, her aunt and uncle wrote the song, The Way You Were, The Way We Were. Oh, now I can find out who it is. Yeah. <laughs> and she is a graphic artist who does book covers cool. right she, she had cat. a whole bunch of book covers she did i said and the one you like is a porno actress oh my gosh <laughs> and yeah. she almost swallowed her tongue <laughs> <laughs> mom always a good judge of character yeah a good screener well there was nothing uh wrong with the porno actress's character she was just just fine but the other one had the had a great pedigree yeah, you know. I know. Funny because uh, parents they look at a whole different set of variables when they're choosing. We're school. really running over, but I got to tell you one little story. She, uh, the one that whose who, who, aunt and uncle were the writers of the way we the way were. were. <laughs> I am more songwriters, very successful songwriters. Alan and Marilyn Bergman. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, this this woman's name was Bergman, and she got sick she got some some kind of cooties i can't remember what so i went out to her place in long island right right to see her and see how she was and she was uh she was staying at her parents place and um she was looking through a a uh, um uh, what do you call it? a box full of letters and she said these are love letters that my father wrote to my mother when they were dating. Did she you said, for one? He said, they're really wonderful. And there's one here where he actually proposes to her. Oh, and, my God. And she, he said, she said, look at it and read it. And it starts off 
what are you doing the rest of your life? Oh, my gosh, you're kidding. The and he said, gone. my aunt and uncle stole that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, oh, this has been a good one. But we just had real fun here. We always do. I, and I thank you so much for redoing these because we were... The other ones were so good, you know. They, and, they were. They, and, I thought and, they and, were. But these were even fun. better, I think. I think. Well, I think. Yeah. Well, it's not like I have, you know, my schedule is full. The only thing I have going is a funeral. So. Yeah, you have a funeral, and I'm sorry to hear about your uh, oh. aunt. I, my aunt. She left. The reason it's so significant of all our uh, aunts and uncles, she's the last one. I mean, our parents. Yeah. Because I. My parents were like, or my cousins were my yeah. siblings. So it's like a, a mom died. Yeah. And, and we listen to the birds. We get to listen to the birds. That's it, man. I oh, by the way, do. quickly, just quickly, I had a hell with it. We, this thing's run 30 minutes now, but I don't <laughs> care. It means I have less time to talk to other people. Anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, you had a hurricane. We did. Hurricane. Uh, and then, but now it will have been a few weeks ago. Did it hit you at all? No, the only thing we got was a lot of rain the night before it hit landfall. We got a lot of rain. But other than that, see, the panhandle is pretty protected. Now, that was in what they call the Big Bend area of the Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. And so it got hit bad. Now, we are between, if you drew a line between Mobile, Alabama and Tallahassee, Florida, we're right in the middle of it on the Florida Okay, coast. so you didn't get hit. We didn't get hit. We um, It rained a lot, but that's all. Oh, that's terrific. Okay, because I was a little worried about I looked at the map that they were showing, and I went, I think she lives there, and nothing's happening there, but this is happening here, you know. Yeah, a, a tiny I town I mean, so called far Paris. as I'm concerned, if it wiped out all of Florida, but your little region, <laughs> I would have felt fine with that. That's what, that we'll program the next hurricane to do exactly Anyway. That. You remember how seriously brain damaged I was when I came back from Florida? Uh, I do. <laughs> anyway, uh, we've gone 31 minutes on this, and they're going to kill me for it. Thank you so much, Lori Thompson. Bye bye. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Now, in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lori. Listen, uh, I got to tell you, that was recorded uh, several weeks ago, right? And we are talking about uh, the uh, the problem with her and, the you know, the hurricane and so on and so forth. And then we have a new hurricane now. Okay. We have a new hurricane. And uh, she is, uh, I, I wrote her today to see how she was doing, and I didn't hear back from her. So I... I don't know, but all I know is that I, I look at the map and it's kind of going up around her area. But I think it may just miss her. But I'm, I, I won't be happy till I hear from her and see how she's doing. And let's see, did she ever write back? Uh, no, no, she didn't write back. Okay, so we'll just. Uh, it does say. Uh, does it say that that uh, mail was delivered? Uh, okay, here. Hold on a second. Uh, yeah, delivered, delivered, delivered. Yeah. So apparently she hasn't. Uh, I, I'll, I'll write her tomorrow uh, an email and see if she gets that. You know, if 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 indeed they're out of there and they're not going onto their computer, they haven't got any internet. Oh, excuse me, uh, internet. Um, you know, that's a problem. Anyway, I am. I have. I'm sneezing today, and my eyes are burning, and yet I, I don't think it's pollen out there, and the temperature is low, so I don't know. See how see how red my eyes are? There, yeah, they're red. Yeah. No. Oh, well, who cares? Anyway, so uh, 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 that was uh, that was my life, and I'm gonna stick to it. Anyway. Um. I hope she's okay, and, uh, uh, you know, as I said in that interview, I, I don't care what happens to Florida, but, <laughs> you know. Uh, I do have some, oh, uh, 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 Albert is supposed to be coming tomorrow, but they couldn't come tomorrow, so they said, could they come yesterday, 
But I couldn't have them come yesterday because I already have people staying here, okay? They came to visit us, and they're leaving tomorrow morning. And then I was we were going to say, okay, now you could, the next the group of people come in here. This has become like a and b right? So now uh, uh, they, uh, they were going to, uh, let me see here, where were they going? Uh, then, yeah. So it was like it was one right on top of the other. Now I said I couldn't have them come yesterday, so now it looks like they're coming tomorrow, which is is uh, um, well, they won't be coming tomorrow. They'll be coming on Friday. That's it. Okay, Friday. So you know we'll see what happens. But anyway, uh, let me admit some people here uh, to our uh, uh, to our. Um, um, let me see to our program, and we'll uh, let them all join us. Here's Charlie Wallace and Tom Yamaguchi, and uh, there's uh, there's uh, Kevin Stopper's phone, iPhone. He's in a car, I think. Are you doing your? Are you doing delivering stuff? Yep. Yep, that's what he's doing, folks. He's delivering stuff. Okay. Anyway. And uh, Brian Neary, we're waiting for him to come on. I been was worried about Brian Neary because I didn't hear from him for a lot of, like a week. But uh, he's here now, or we think he's here now. Uh, but we'll we'll wait and see what uh, what happens. He probably signed on, and then oh, there he is. Well, blip, blip, blip. Okay. Hmm. Uh. There he is. There he is. Where are you? Are you at home or are you in a motel, hotel somewhere or what? He's still connecting. How's my... Yeah, I can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, can you see me? Yeah, I can it's see you. It's got to be a motel. No, no. Nobody paints a room all white. Yeah. Is that a motel? I haven't, I haven't finished re I haven't finished modeling. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. See, my internet's so bad. No, but it's, it's working fine. It works. Time to move back to San Jose. Yeah. No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. You're fine. Yeah. So we haven't heard from you in a Hi. week. We haven't heard from you in a week, and I was worried about you, you know? I know. Timing was just, like, bad. It was, like, just things happening, and, yeah, it was, yeah. So, so we're th yeah, I, 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 I hope they were. Ste Stephanie plays yeah, Stephanie plays flag football on Thursday nights. So I've been watching her play football on Tuesday and Thursday nights. Friday night, I was drinking. <laughs> it's just like weird things happening. So. Weird things are happening. I was drinking, and yeah. weird things are happening. Yeah. Weird <laughs> things happen. <laughs> this seems awful <laughs> smiley there. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so life is good. Life you is look good. exhausted. Yeah, you know, yeah. Been doing a lot of driving. A lot of driving? Yeah, because like Thursday nights, Tuesday and Thursday nights, her games are at 7 p.m. And then I drive after you know, she's done around 8 or so, then I drive an hour back home, and then I turn around and drive an hour back the next morning, so... But Stephanie is the other daughter. The Stephanie's the other daughter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's the older one. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. So somebody's got to watch her. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's nice of you. That's wonderful. Even though you don't seem to be having much of a relationship with the mother any longer. But, but you, you know, I mean, Char I think Charlie played sport. You know, some of us played sports. And when you play sports and your parents aren't there to watch. Yeah. You... Sometimes it's like, why play? You know, at least yeah. when I played, that's how I was. Because you were playing um, for them, kind of. Yeah, I mean, you get a little extra boost. Yeah, so, yeah, so, uh, just get disappointed he, in parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. When he so, said so he was I, driving, I, I thought he said he was on drugs. Well, you know, for a guy, for, for a guy who waited till how old to have a child, his first child, you were in your late forties. What, 50s? 48. No, oh, late 40s. 48. 48. 48. Yeah. 48. yeah. You sure turned out to be a good father. Even to the yeah. children that, you know, aren't your blood, you know? 
Yes. Yeah, because we always, I mean, I always wanted them to do something, some sports or something. And this is, Stephanie was doing tennis, but couldn't go to any tennis stuff. And now she's doing this and we can go to that. So her mom went like two times and then doesn't go. And so I go, you know, and, and Stephanie sees me and she's all excited. You know, she waves and she plays really good. But, uh, you know, they're like quarterback favors, just hucking the ball at a couple of the, the other kids and she's open. Yeah. And finally they started using her the other night. So it was like, you know, really exciting for her. And then actually Tiffany did go that night, her and I both. So, mm -hmm. so those things are exciting for her. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I know how it is. Like I said, playing sports or your parents are there. It's always a little bump. So, yeah. Well, you're, you, I, you turned out to be a good father, you know, it suits you well. Yeah, I've got to break the chain sometimes. So. Yeah. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. I um, hope uh, Lori's okay uh, in the wake of this uh, big hurricane I call uh, 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 Milton the Monster. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, there was an old cartoon show in the 60s oh, called there... Milton Monster. Really? I, don't, I yeah. don't ever remember that. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was sort of like a, a Frankenstein and the, 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 the well, Frankenstein's monster, the Frankenstein doctor. Uh, the premise was that uh, he uh, had this uh, potion called tenderness and he had only to add a little drop to, so that the, the monster would not be so bad it would kill him. But he dumped, accidentally dumped a whole bunch of the um, potion into the, the mix and then Milton was a big sweetheart. <laughs> so that was the whole premise of the, that was the whole premise of, of the cartoon. But uh, oh. anyway, but that was anybody yeah. remember Milton the monster? No. I do. Yep, you I do? remember it. Mm. Reminds yeah. me of Donald Trump in reverse. Yeah. <laughs> what were you? Did you remember him, Kevin? Yeah, I remember. I used to watch it all the time. Yeah. Really? Oh wow! Because yeah. I, I, uh, I don't remember it. But then again. Really? Well, that was a six. I mean, you're a grown man. <laughs> yeah. I was a teenager. I was even not watching any real cartoons on Saturday morning then. But that one just sort of like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But yeah, so so uh, that's hitting the coast right now. Yeah. Hitting the coast right now. Yeah. So I, hope, I hope Lori is um, okay. Well, well, she's up towards the top of the. Uh, 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 so yeah. Toward the panhandle? Tur towards yeah. the panhandle, yeah. Okay. In and, the panhandle, yeah. Yeah, or in the okay. panhandle. So um, it is going to be windy up there, and it's going to be rainy, but I don't know if it's going to be, you know, flooding and things like that, you know. Uh, so it's they're, this, doing your, they're, hmm? they're doing your fun thing, you know. They're saying, oh, we hope, you know, Caitlin Collins is reporting and saying, oh, we're hoping, you know, we're getting the CNN reporters so they're safe, you know. And I'm like, get them the fuck out of there. They'll be safe if you get them out of there. Tonight, tonight, I'm tonight I am watching. Tonight I'm watching Lester Holt on NBC. Yeah. You know where this moron was. You, you know where this moron was. He was in yeah. Florida with rain dropping on him, and I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> Why are you? Why are you down there? Are you helping in any way? You know, you're probably just getting the in the way. Were there. Hmm? The reporters were under the shelter, but then Lester, they got to have him in the rain. Yeah, and but then, if they get flooded then, in and the and the winds are too much, and you know, yeah. I mean, I was way, I was hoping the wind would come along and blow Lester on his ass. <laughs> you know, but they <laughs> and then they stick these poor the people out in the middle of the the rain. And I always remember the time that I watched one of these things, and the person was going, "Oh man, it's a really flooded around here," and so on. And you look in the back. And there is a, 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 what do you call it? A, a ledge. It's, uh, you know, it's dry. That all she had to do was get out of that and just climb up on that, and she would have been dry. But no, she yeah, wants you. to be in the middle with her waiters going, look at me, how brave I am. Uh, yeah. It's even worse when they got the guy leaning into the wind, and then you look in the background, and some lady's walking their dog across <laughs> they did the did that once. <laughs> I remember yes. that one. Yes, yes, yes. But, I mean, excuse me, I have a, for some reason, I don't have a cold, but I'm, I'm a, it's an allergy tonight. I have no idea. My eyes are burning, and, you know, so. 
I'm trying. Uh, to. You know, I think that I'm not very religious, as most of the people know here, but I think this is God's way of telling us that we shouldn't allow Trump to run for president. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think so. I do. In fact, I've decided maybe I'm not voting for Kamala Harris. I know. You said Why that. Is that? Hmm? Why is that? Well, I've watched her recently on some of these shows she goes on, like Stephen Colbert and so on, and I have found her to not be as excellent as I thought she was. Here's the problem she has. She goes on 60 Minutes, all right? Uh, I guess we haven't done this show since she was on 60 Minutes. That was, a good, that was a good show, I thought. I didn't think so at all. I thought she was okay. terrible. I thought I the problem with her was, you know, for the longest time, the thing I've liked about her is she brought jo joy to the, uh, to the election process. She brought joy to her campaign. There's a certain light, happy quality. Uh, uh, Bob still being serious about the matters at hand, but it was the joy that I really, really, I found infectious. And none of that joy was on display on 60 Minutes. It was just like she was too serious, you know. Yeah. Oh, should, should I change my voting card? Well, what, what, <laughs> and my other because reason, Kamala, I don't know if my cameras. My, my other reason is she did Howard Stern. But I, 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 uh, I, don't. I heard that interview. I thought it was really good. I heard him That's do great. it. I thought he was so softball, it was ridiculous. Well, all right, I will defend it, and and I also I also. Uh, Heard the, the the interview with, with with Biden. I really like that too. It's a different kind of interview, and basically the whole idea behind it is to really, you know, everybody say, "Oh, we don't know Kamala Harris. We don't know who, yeah. who she is." I mean, it gave her an opportunity to, to to for us to really know who she is, her values, her interests, her music interests. Her, you know, she's a big Prince fan. I just love the whole interview. I, I thought it was really great. And I know I, you, and I'll tell you, Alex, I, I, I know, you know, I am not a Howard, I have not been a Howard Stern fan going back to when he was trying to push you off, off the air. I am not a Howard, but I have to admit, I've developed a Respect for Howard Stern. I thought I thought the way he conducted the interview was really well, good. Well, I saw that it was interview. Different from no, it was different from what. Yeah, but what I saw other that, types of interviews. What expect. I saw that interview was he was fawning over her. He was just not asking any hard questions, and and I don't Howard. Think he's, and, I don't think that was the point. That no, but not, I mean, but that's, that's not. not but that's not Howard. Howard's known for being able to be somewhat uh, in your face with stuff. And, and, you know, if she were, were to come on here, I would ask her some tough questions. I, I mean, I'm for her. You can certainly her. do that. You can I'm certainly do I'm that. I'm for but her, and I think she's, uh, you know, I want to see her be president. But on the other hand, I would ask her some hard questions. I mean, I felt in some of these interviews that I've seen, she skirted stuff that she shouldn't have skirted. It didn't look bad. It didn't look good. It had a bad look to it, you know? Okay. Well, I haven't seen the I haven't seen the sixty minutes interview. I'll have well, to she watch. did sixty minutes in one week. She did sixty minutes. She did Colbert. She did and Stern the and the View. Mm -hmm. Oh, and one other one. Some woman who has a call, call her daddy. Call yeah. her daddy was. Yeah. Was that it? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. and that's like a. That's almost like a, from what I understand, it's a women's place to talk about sex and all that other crap. So what she's on is this, <clears throat> she's on a social media, I got to do an interview with this group, I got to do an interview with this group, and she's trying to drag in votes. That's obvious. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people were complaining, group. a lot of people were complaining about the host of that, who's your daddy or whatever that thing is. Because yeah, Alice Cooper, uh, Alice Cooper is it? Yeah. No, I didn't. No, uh -huh. but, but she... Yeah, it's really close to what and, they did. No, but she didn't... Um, they, they, they said she had a certain way of doing her show and that she went against that. She was like, again, yeah. she was too gobsmacked by the fact that she had Kamala Harris there 
rather than right. just doing what she always does. You I know. almost saw that on, on all of them, really. Yeah. You know, you could see that a little bit on each one, but um, I think it was more of a, I think it was more of a personality tour on all these places, except maybe 60 Minutes, and I didn't see that one, but, but I, I saw the others, but I think it was more of a personality tour, this is what I'm like, like, like Tom's saying, yeah. Yeah, but I do think she did anything on any of these interviews to get any new voters well, on her side. She basically was just reinforcing her 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 idea of, you know, what, what a douche, you know, Donald Trump is, and, and what her differences are between him mm -hmm. and her. That's pretty much what it was. Char Charlie? Yeah, I saw the 60 Minutes uh, interview, and I thought, I thought she did fine on it. But my, my point here is that there's only two choices. Either Kamala Harris is going to be president or Donald Trump's going to be president. Which one do you want? Did she do anything in any of these interviews to make you think Donald Trump was better than she was? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, so you but, need to vote but, for but her did she did she do anything did Donald she do Trump. anything on these interviews that started to blur a little bit of the distinction between the two? You know, I mean, uh, I, I always liked her because I felt she was the, you know, she was the uh, literally the uh, the what do you call it the uh, 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 antidote to Trump, and I didn't feel in any of these interviews she was the antidote to Trump. You know. Well, I certainly did. <laughs> you you did? Yeah. Yeah. Put, put give it give put put Trump in one of either any of those interviews, and you know what you'd get. Well, no, but that's why he didn't do them. But, yeah. But that's down. the difference. That's yeah. the difference, Al. Yeah. You know he. he she went in and did them, and if he wants to do them, go ahead. It'll make it even worse. Yeah, well, I mean, I, you know, uh, yes, uh, Alan. I, I'm I, I, I'm with Charlie. If you don't vote for her, it sort of gives Donald Trump an, a, a more of a vote. Listen, if yeah. I don't vote for her in New York, si in New York City, yeah, well, I'm not doing anything. New York anything. City and California are kind of the same. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. blue and it's going to stay blue. If I don't, you know, if I don't mail my ballot in, right. it's not going to really change anything. No. You know, I mean, that's what always bothered me about this whole thing about electoral college. I mean, I would like to know that my single vote helps her win. But it doesn't help her win. It didn't help. It didn't help uh, 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 um, Hillary. Hillary Clinton, yeah, and I voted right. for Hillary Clinton. But my one vote didn't help, you know. And he didn't get uh, he he didn't get as many votes as she did. He's never won an election. Nope. Well, he's know. never won the popular vote. Well, that's what I'm no, saying. But he never won. He never won, won the popular vote. Well, you know, and I I don't. Is there should there be any other kind of vote? But a popular vote. Well, I agree, I and so. and you know, of course, there's that. Uh, I forget the exact what they call it. The Vernon Nunn vote, which if he was here, he'd tell me. But it's 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 what's called compact, where yeah. if you have enough states, and California is one. I think New York also. If you have enough states, so that their combined electoral votes adds up to two seventy. If you have those states say, whoever wins the national popular vote gets all our state's electoral college votes, mm -hmm. okay? If you had that happen, then that would be, then that, then, then that the per person who gets the, would, would actually win the election. Yeah. Well, and I, I think I that's, the I, yeah, way, I, yeah. that's the only way, that's the only way that we'll be able to really do it without without do, doing a, uh, a constitutional amendment. Well, I think we got to go for some kind of constitutional amendment and get rid of the goddamn thing because it's, well, it's not very fair. difficult. It's, it's hard, really new. difficult to, to amend the Constitution. This would yeah, probably yeah. three fourths of the states vote for it, and too many states are run by Republicans to ever get three fourths of it. And yeah. I think we're I think we're just a couple of states away from getting that magic two seven. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a possibility. We just you know, and as I said, you know, it, if you have enough of those states, then yeah. we would have the popular vote winner become elected. Well, you know, I, I, needless to say, I don't, I don't want to see uh, Trump win. Uh, you know, uh, I and I'll the... tell you, I, I, I'm in your in your situation too, as far as 
California, my vote doesn't make much to any oh, difference oh, in the oh. president. But I want, I want to bury Trump in a landslide yeah. of votes for Kamala Harris. Yeah. I'm definitely voting for Kamala Harris. Yeah, but all I'm saying, in California, I remember, uh, I t keep telling this story, uh, I was supposed to do election night co Reagan. coverage at, at uh, KMEL, and I think mm -hmm. Reagan was running again. Right. And so uh, we were going to start our election night coverage at 8 o'clock at night on the West Coast, because that's when the polls closed, okay? Right. So I'm on my way driving across the bridge, and all of a sudden I hear on the news... And they've just called the election for Ronald Reagan. Yep. I got mm -hmm. I got my car. I Turned think I around did, and I, went home. I did a U-turn in the Golden Gate Bridge and went home. And I <laughs> called the station. I said, there's no reason for us to be doing anything. Okay. Um, Don't anybody tell Alex, but he told the same story last week. I know I told the same story <laughs> last week. He told the same story for years. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> I only Definitely. have you know, I only have three stories. I keep repeating them, and I'm going to keep doing it till you don't listen anymore. <laughs> you know, I think he, I think she was smart to get on Howard Stern. I don't like him, and and not only because you don't, but because I personally don't. But she needs to. She got a slow start at getting in front of people and doing one-on-one -on -one interviews, and I think she's trying to pick that up a little bit. And even mix it up with some of these people that are wackos, like Howard Stern, you know? Howard Stern's not a wacko. He's an old I man. Think... He's an old man trying to keep on to his, keep his millions, you know? He's not, he's not, he's not anything special anymore, you know? Well, that matter. The more people that get to see her on one-on-one -on -one interviews, the better. I think if she went over to Fox and did an interview, I would be giving her... All my support. I heard, I heard she offered to, and Fox said no. Fox won't do it, yeah. Fox won't do it? I Really? They don't want to go against Trump. Oh, I didn't hear that. I heard he, he turned down the Fox debate, Trump. Yeah. Yeah. That I heard. No, it wasn't yeah. a Fox Trump debate. Trump turned down the Fox debate. Yeah, Trump turned down the Fox debate. That's what was I heard. Was it a Fox yeah, debate? Yeah, Kamala was that going one? to do a debate on Fox. Yeah. That's right. Oh, Really? Because I think yeah. it was with Britt Baer, and he he has to have his Sean Hannity. He, you know, Trump. I'm telling you guys, I'm getting worried because I think he he he's the one in hiding. Really, he doesn't want to give any interviews, Trump, unless it's in a safe place because he knows he can't get coherent sentences out. So he's remember he said Biden was in the basement. This guy is so in the basement now he won't even come out for anything. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. going to yeah. these rallies and spouting <laughs> complete gibberish. Yeah, he makes yep. no sense when he goes off the thing. Sounds like a three-year-old kid. Well, I don't understand. You know, I don't understand the the, the it, it, Kamala Harris should be far more ahead of him. This that's year. what's scary. Yeah, that's what's scary. I told you guys this. Remember I said this, Charlie? They're afraid to vote for the woman and she's black. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. And that was what my beef was six months ago. Well, she's not black. She's Indian. Or is she black? Well, whatever. You know, she's not white <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, you know. But, you know, I don't, I don't know what she is. She changes yeah, it but all I don't, the time. That doesn't matter to me what race she is. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Tell that to the rednecks living in the middle of the country who still think he's a good idea. Well, I, I get what you're saying, Tony. But, you know, I just, I, to me, the race isn't, a, isn't an issue here. She's a smart woman. She's capable of running the country. Yeah. Dude, I, I understand. You know, you know, Alex, you know what I don't get? And Tom and all you guys is too. I, I can't wrap my head around how they're voting for a guy who literally is a crook. Yeah. What does that say for our country that, like, I'm ready to, like, I see no, Trump. It, like, the, the, no, here's the part that's bad. He's a crook it? and they don't care. Exactly. Yeah. That's what's scary. Yeah. He's I mean, get over this. It's like the bar world. Every time I look around, I'm like, what the hell's going on here? But you, you have Dallas Cowboy fan friend. You have Dallas Cowboy fans too, right? So you have people that are just dedicated to that that cause, and they will not go no matter what. <laughs> Well, I just walked the old game with that. I, just, I don't know. I don't know how many. I don't know how many votes these votes are that people are saying that are that are just out there and they're undecided. Yeah. I, I don't see where that's coming from. Those Trump people are not going to change. 
No matter how nice Got Kamala it. is on these things, no matter how okay. hard she is on those, have have to bring she... back the rule of law and order after committing 34 felonies. In January 6th? They don't care. They don't he had care. a bad day. They, one of the they're guys, they're you know what they said, Alex? What? At the Coliseum, they had the guy, like, man on the street, the Jordan Clapper guy. He had one of his guys there. And he said, what do you think of January 6th? You know what the guy said, the Trump guy, the fan? He had a bad day. He had a bad day. He tried to overthrow the government. Exactly. <laughs> a bad day. Maybe I was late for work. Well, I think that was America had a bad day. Yeah. You, you know. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't even know, man. I can't get over it. I think you're right, Alex. This country, they deserve what they get if they get him. I hope he burns it. I, I hope he sticks it up their ass if he gets in. Hey, I don't care. I'm going to be in. I'm going to be in in France, and if he wins, I'm not coming back. And Alan, is Bill really this retarded that he's going to vote for him? And what a pussy! He can't even call the show anymore. He's got to hide. His girlfriend must not let him out of the house. He's got his balls in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> Can I call Alex? No, he doesn't agree with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, according, according to, uh, I mean, I met his uh, his girlfriend, and she's very oh, nice. I thought she was a very yeah. nice lady. He used to tell me that when he she heard you on the show. Oh, I don't like his politics. So he, don't, Alex, doesn't even know her. It's older at the time. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, when they came over here, Alex, we didn't talk you politics. What? And I'm not trying to pick on the Trumpers, but it's like I have no respect for them because they're like retarded, really. At least the kid who's retarded, he's there's something wrong with him. You got to take care of him. These people are like, you would think like they're civilized in the mind. They can figure out like this guy is no good. It's a cult. They're brainwashed. Yeah, I don't they, think so. They think, I think, think they think, 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 think that all the charges. Look, look tell, I, I, tell me, they think all the charges that were okay. against him are all false. That they were all rigged. I mean, they they think these things because Trump keeps telling them all this. I, I, just, I understand. They, I think it's ignorance. I understand if you're a Republican. Yeah, and you don't want to vote for Kamala Harris because you're a exactly. Republican. I understand gotcha. that. Okay. Yeah. What I don't understand is why you feel the option is to vote for Trump. You know, to begin with, there are a lot of third-party options. If you want to go uh, uh, even more right-wing than than uh, the party is, um, but I mean, it just it it seems to me like you've got other choices. One of the choices is yeah. you vote for the vice president, but you don't vote for the president. Okay. You know, you, you know their 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 names are together. You you if you're voting no, for no, not on my ballot. Not on your ballot. On my Is ballot, I I believe on my ballot, uh, uh president, you vice president, or, for yep, yep. president and vice president. Yep. Mm, that's interesting. Hey Alex, I send Brian. Tell him what I send you in the picture. Who? My mother's hey. ballot. The mailing. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah. Tell Alex. Tony's mom's ballot got sent to Tony. Yeah, I got it upstairs, Alex. And if you don't know, she's she's passed away a couple of years. Yeah, she said two years. I'm going to vote for the Trump. audience. The audience that doesn't know the whole Tony story. <laughs> but both, she's this still whole claim. Texas. You cannot vote separately in Texas. You yeah. can't vote separately. I'd go, I'd go run vote. out and get mine and see if I can vote separately. Well, if you can't vote separately, Tony, Tony are you, just you don't, turn in? I could sign her name. I used to do it for her. Just don't vote on the top of the ballot. Vote for your senators. Yeah. Vote for your congressmen. Yeah. You know, do all of that. But you don't have to vote for Trump. I mean, how can you vote for somebody who's morally corrupt? I mean, I don't. Know. But yeah, I'm, Alex, I'm, don't not. Why are you going to not vote for her just because she had these softball interviews? I don't get it. Well, no, I'm saying that I watched her and I felt l a after I'd seen all the interviews she did, mm -hmm. I was a little less enthusiastic about her than I was. I realized there's no choice, but I'm not as enthusiastic as I was about her. I was very enthusiastic about her, as you know, because I liked the joy that she brought to the, the election. Uh, and and the joy she brought to politics. That's what how politics should be, okay. And 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 in, in these interviews, I didn't see that joy in evidence. You know, um, maybe a little bit on Colbert. 
Okay. She had a beer with him, I heard. Does that, I mean, I, they're probably faking it, right? What? I, I only watched, I, I listened to that, the Howard Stern one. And it was, I think it was, for a person who already knew how I'm going to go for, it was neat to hear some of the behind the scenes. You know, like when, when you know, Howard asked, you know, when he, what were you thinking when he started saying, you know, they're eating the cats and they're eating yeah. the dogs, they're eating the pets, you know? <laughs> and, you know, you could see sort of the things that she's going through in the process and then her background and stuff like that. I think it was really interesting to somebody who already knows who they're going to vote for. Now, if I didn't know who I was going to vote for, of course, but I, I don't know if, if, I know if in, either of them are going to say anything to make me sway my vote. Well, I mean, let's face it, what choice do we have, you know? I mean, I've either got to vote for Kamala, yeah, or not, or don't vote at all. I just pray he loses. I'm just worried. Or I can go and just, you know, not vote for president. But it'd be kind of silly, you know, to do that, especially when uh, I want her to get, you know, get my vote. Okay, but uh, you know, just kind of it was. I just felt a little less sure of her after all these interviews that she did than I do now. You want a little more substance, before, I think you could say, too. No, it's not yeah. substance. Well, I, I, it felt, I, I felt she was avoiding some substance, oh. yeah. Okay, yeah. well, let's talk, about su- let's talk about substance. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm glad Tony's And by the way, here. don't compare her to Trump, because Trump has no, no substance. <laughs> and and, and yeah. that's not what we're talking about here. Yeah. There you well, go. Anyway, talk about substance. And that, mm-hmm. this was something that she announced on, uh, on, on the View interview. Mm-hmm. And then repeated later on Stern. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I said, I'm glad Tony's here, because Tony and I have something in common. We're both caregivers. Yeah, I used to be. Well, well he's not them. anymore, but but, <laughs> but Tony was a, Tony was a caregiver. Yes, and so the 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 idea that that uh, Harris announced is that you. she wants to expand Medicare mm-hmm. to include long term in home care. That would have been good. Yeah. And this is this is real. I mean, as a as a home caregiver myself. Yeah. This is a great idea, and and, and I, it's not nothing new. It's not anything new because actually, uh, Biden wants to expand home home care. That's a good idea. Yeah, too, and yeah. that's very nice. That's very nice. nice. Yeah, but you know, she's also saying, "I want to do this, and I want to give a twenty five thousand uh, dollar, you know, advance on uh, on oh, buying oh. a home, and blah blah blah, blah and thousands, thousands of dollars to this and that." And when on 60 Minutes, uh, he said, how are you going to pay for it? She didn't come up with a very good answer. She said, oh, well, we'll go after the billionaires. I mean, it was, it was very nebulous. Well, I can well see you know, there. it's I very can easy when what? you're running for president to say you're going to do this, that you, you're going to give away what? the farm. Yeah, because okay. once well, you're elected, case, you don't have to do it. In the case of Medicare, she said there, if, 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 if we can expand... Excuse me, um, folks. I, I feel I got a cold here. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. I got my flu shot. We can out. expand the ability of the federal government to negotiate drug prices, like they've had with some drugs. Mm-hmm. Insulin, yeah. She says that we could actually have enough savings to pay for that expenditure. Yeah. Uh, so it's I, paid I for. That. It's paid for, just like the Inflation Reduction Act was paid for. All, all I'm savings. saying is, you can do all this while you're running for office. But can you really pull it off once you're president? That's my well, question. He's gonna, yeah, that's a different. He's going to need Congress. I mean, and let's Congress. just face it. You know, when when if she has when, a Congress on her side, if she has a Senate on her side, she can get a lot of stuff done. But yeah. if the Republicans didn't rule the House, we would still have uh, the uh, child tax credit that we had right. for like yeah. a year or so during COVID. That all yeah. went away. Well, you know, if she can, if, if she can get all the various segments of the of, of the United States on her side, she's mm. gonna be okay. You know, she might be able to do some of this stuff, but you know, mm. it, it it's she can promise anything she wants to right now. I, you know, can she pull it off? Mm. You know, we don't well, know. Yeah. Well, Biden, Biden pulled some of it off. I mean, unfortunately, because we had uh, Mansion and Cinema, yeah, uh, you know, blocking. I mean, Build Back Better became the Inflation Inflation Reduction Act, which was a you know 
a fraction of what we could have gotten, but it was better than nothing. I yeah. mean, Harris was the tie-breaking vote. It was yeah. a 50-50 Senate. Fortunately, it didn't require uh, fill, uh, you know, uh, uh, 60 votes because it was, uh, what would they call, um, a budget uh, reconciliation. Yeah. So Dubin because of reconciliation, they were able to get it by with a simple majority vote. Right. And we got great climate uh, 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 legislation passed or, or spending passed. We got uh, health care. And uh, we could have gotten more. And if we work hard enough, we can. I mean, we can do it. We just Trump have to get it goes away if Trump wins. Over. All well, that goes away if Trump I'll tell wins. you, in a way, yep. uh, what I we've totally got. I totally agree with Charlie. We've got a country that uh, uh, that would like to say that the great idea of, of this government is compromise. And I think compromise sucks. Yep, Com sure compromise, when you compromise on anything, you water it down. No, there should never Obamacare. be any, com well, there shouldn't be yeah. any compromise. I mean, Obamacare was a huge compromise. It was yeah, so yeah, much well. better what he proposed, and the Republicans wouldn't let him put it through. Of so course. he had to yeah. put down that watered down thing that he of had. Well, we just say forget the whole thing because well, we couldn't, you know. No, no, no. Well, yeah, we, no, well we the Republican, we, we, we one Republican. Let's, right, go right. let's go back to the beginnings. Obamacare. Let's go back to the beginnings of Medicare. Uh, Medicare <laughs> only takes care of eighty percent of your medical costs. Why yeah, didn't it take that care of a hundred? That was a compromise, and it's a sucky compromise. Yeah. Because it costs you more to pay for that extra supplemental yeah. than yeah. ever would have to pay for the Medicare. Yeah. You know, yeah. if they just done the other twenty percent, we yeah. we would have been gold. You what know, they call that? The donut hole, Alex? Was that what no, they were calling? The donut, no, hole. that's not donut the holes not... in uh, in prescription. Oh, yeah. Okay, and that's just going away in that. 2025. The donut hole's gone. Yeah, which is good. Thanks to, thanks to President Biden. Yep. Maximum you know, out, maximum out of pocket in 2025. It's still two thousand dollars, but fine. Some people don't have any money. Try and yeah. find the two thousand dollars. I understand Just that, but right now, trying to find twenty thousand. Well, right now it's at eight thousand dollars. So yeah. you know, two thousand is better than eight. True. And, well, and you're right, Alex. If you don't, some people don't have the money to come yeah. up with that two thousand. Yeah. Most people probably won't reach that two thousand. And you know what I was well, going to tell you. No. I was going to, I was going to tell Tom. Did you hear what she said to Unstern? She, she alluded to it. She may put Alex, a Republican, in a Catholic Chinese. It sounds like. Yeah, well, he asked her if you know, she if she'd be be you know is going to put a Republican in. That would be nice. I thought Tom. Well, yeah, sure. Why not? She had I already mean, said. You know, she had I already. Mean, it's, she had it's, already it's said. On the she had already said elsewhere that she was going to do that. You know. Yeah, well, it's and that's not a hard. That's questions. not a hard. That's not a hard thing to do. Her name is Liz Cheney. Yeah, you know, right. so yeah. I mean, and, and I I heard a one historian had an interesting point. You know, uh, where would you put a Liz Cheney in a, into the administration? It could be a UN ambassador. A what? UN ambassador mm -hmm. would oh, be a good, good position for Liz Cheney. Yeah, or, or you could or you could make one up. Well, anyway. you could put her in charge of COVID. You could do a million things. Yeah, but I'd say that would be one woman. example, and it doesn't have to be Liz Cheney. It could be another another Republican. I remember um, Obama had uh, Ray LaHood as his Secretary of Transportation. Yeah. He was really good, you know. And the reason why Ray LaHood was, was involved was because uh, when uh, Obama was a state senator in Illinois, uh, they worked together on 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 death penalty issues, and so they could develop a good friendship. We still, and as we, I said, Ray LaHood was a great Secretary of Transportation. Yeah, we so still, I'm, we open still, to, I'm open to a Republican for a, 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 a Harris administration. Ray, did you see any of these interviews that she did over the weekend or the I last didn't. couple of days? I, I didn't watch any of them, no. Oh, okay. I heard about them and read about them, but I didn't watch them. We yeah. still have a Trump appointee in Biden's administration. I uh, know. The head of the Fed. Trump appointed him. Yeah, and he's well, done. That's not he's really done. The, no, that's not that's not really considered administration. No, the, no. The, no. The, the Trump federal is a totally Biden different. Could, different Biden could have replaced him. That's that's a totally independent. 
The, the Federal the Reserve is a part of the executive no, branch. Uh, hold on, what were you going to say, Ray? The Federal Reserve is actually uh, is not even actually um, technically part of the government. It's no. it's a, it's a private entity. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the president gets to pick who the head of the Fed is. Yeah. Okay, so uh, but, Biden could have put a Democrat in there and took the president guy out of there. Why, if he was doing a good job? Oh, there's a term. That, there's a I, I agree. Why? He, just, he is doing a good job. Yeah. No, the one that's killing us is DeJoy and the post office, and, and yeah. they can't yeah. seem to get him out. Nope. Yeah. He's been ruining the post office. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah, no have, have you noticed, have any of you lost postage or that you sent that just never reached? Oh, it? yes. It happens to me all I the mean, time. We, yeah. It's happening to us all the time now, too. My son didn't get his medicine. My wife sent something to uh, for to get my son's 523 transferred to us, and she had to get all these special signatures that got lost. Um Oh, yeah, never that, had that is an you auger. Know, it does an auger well better. for mail-in ballots, does it? Yes. No, I don't know if I don't think That's I'm going to mail I'm mine in mine tomorrow. So it has four weeks to get there. Yeah. I think I'm going to fill fill up my mail-in ballot and walk it over and put it in the box. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but that doesn't mean it gets from the box to the post well, office. Well, anything to do with it getting. From no, the no. Box. I mean, I'm just going to bring it to the to the poll on the right. on election yeah. day. Oh, and, and drop it yeah. there. Yeah, 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 you can do yeah, that. They also have um, yeah. they also have drop boxes. I, I they have several in Berkeley. That's I, what he's talking about. Oh yeah, we have oh. we have those too. Yeah, there's oh, one I in my city hall. I always put mine there. Right? Yeah, we, we don't have anything like that. Yeah, California's really? great. Hmm? California. I was going to say it's all over California. Yeah, yeah. You can get drop boxes at all most libraries. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, yeah, the thing that I think one thing I was mentioning this the other day on the other show, uh, and it, it kind of gets to me when I'm watching TV, all of a sudden they do an ad against somebody. OK. Yep. And I have no idea what party the guy who they're doing the thing against. Yep. You're right. <laughs> is is part of. OK. Yeah. And then I'll see an ad by him, and it doesn't say, excuse me. <laughs> what he's running for or, is, or anything. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Here's me. There's one like that on Hulu that, here that runs constantly, and I have no idea who the guy is they should have or what to, he's running for. Whatever happened to them saying Republican candidate, whatever, I so know. we know. <laughs> Tonight, I thought there was some woman, and I went, God, she's got to be a Republican. So I asked, uh, uh, you know, um, Alexa, uh, what party was she from? And it turned out she was a Democrat. You know? It just seems like really bad marketing. <laughs> well, a lot of people just don't want to say I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat because they'll just turn a bunch of people off by making. Oh, that's a oh, that's a good point. That's yeah, but I mean, is. I would like to know when somebody is putting somebody else down. She's the person she's Powell putting Wilson. down is is yeah. of a certain party that isn't theirs. I'd like to know what their party is, and it's a committee for a better government. You know, well, what does that mean? Yeah, really. You know, so I mean, uh, I I just feel that, that you watch all these ads and they you just don't know what to believe because of course the negative ads are going to all be lies, you know, yeah. but whether the Republican or Democrat that are doing them. Yeah. So it just gets down and dirty, and then you have no perception about what party the person is from that they're doing the ad against. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that that certainly is, a, to me, a violation of something, you know, and it has to be corrected. There has to be a law made to change that. But there won't be because there are people who like to do that kind of advertising. So, oh, mm -hmm. boy, I'll just be glad when all of this is over. God. The only thing well, is you get... Hey, we, Alex. What? Oh, Sorry. I just wanted to tell you something before I forgot, but I don't want to change the subject if you don't want to. It was something for you when you go to Paris. Yeah. Um, there's this, it, it's Notre Dame virtual reality experience. Uh huh. Uh, if you go, when you go, you got to do this thing. It's the most, it's like you're on the holodeck on Star Trek. 
Oh, uh, really? It's incredible. It's and, right and, next to the cathedral. Right next to the cathedral? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's I mean, right, yeah check, you should check it out. It's amazing. Really? I know some tickets, yeah. Ray. I don't know huh? how much walking I'm going to be able to do today. I yeah, could, it's a hard, there's hardly any walking. I could, it's, har it's, I could hardly walk today. And I'll tell you, as somebody brought it up to me, I've been doing all this PT stuff at home, and then I go for a walk and I can't walk. Yeah. And I think it's from doing the PT. Oh, I've been worse from PT myself. Yeah, sometimes. yeah. And yeah. if I don't do PT, I bet I'm not as weak when I'm walking, you know. But I did the PT before I went walking today, and it was terrible. Yeah, it was Actually, just the medical terrible. community would disagree. The PT is good for you, build strength. That's and it makes it. That's it fine. makes it less likely that you're gonna fall. Well, I'm telling you right now, I could barely walk. Okay. Okay. All right. Maybe the exercises aren't the right ones. Well, yeah, that's it, true. It could be, you know, uh, it, you know, I, 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 I really don't know. All I know is I was bought walking better before the PT than I am now. Okay, so, you know. What are you doing at the PT? What what type of exercises? Uh, you know, leg things and uh, you know. Uh, Balancing things and uh, uh, standing up and getting muscles going in the in the in the legs and 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 uh, then leg up and down up and down you know uh, a lot of leg stuff and I think that stuff is making it weak for me when I'm walking you know hmm. it's so just it's easy to test. huh it's easy to test stop it for a couple of weeks and go on your walks and if. It, it's not bothering you. Go back to the PT for a week or two, and if it bothers you, you'll you'll have a you'll have an answer. Well, I'm going to talk to my PT person next week yeah, and say, yeah. you know, I really think it seems to be so much worse when I, you know, when I don't do anything. Take that them. cane to France. What? Take the, take cane. the cane that I. Sent oh, you to I France. of course I'm going to I'm, you know, I'm going to take a second one in case that one breaks. Well, you know, well, and I know, I know. In most one? places in in the world, you can buy, you know. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, folks, if I've been sneezing tonight and so on. But for some reason, I feel like I, my eyes are tight, burning, and so on. And there's something in the air here. So, what the hell? Uh, Clearly, what? That's the reason I'm not off sneezing and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, I don't know what I'm allergic to. It doesn't look like there's a lot of pollen this time of year, but you never know. Could be there's more mold. Global warming has caused evergreens, like I'm allergic to, to be pollinating year round around here. So uh, no wonder I have, I've been, I've been having to take Zyrtec now, which I, I take it every day. Yeah, I'm yeah. the same way, yeah. Ray. Yeah, my friend in San Jose, she her eyes were all puffy. She says yeah. she never gets allergies, and right now yeah. it's really really. Bad. Really, really bad. bad, really yeah, bad. Okay, I'll I'll uh, I'll uh, look at that. But it just, gives me a sore throat. Yeah, mm. I'm just thinking of not working out for a couple of days and seeing if my legs are better. You yeah. Know? yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, if so, I'm going to have to stop doing it. And next time I go to my PT session, tell them, hey, you know, I couldn't do it anymore because it was affecting the way I walked. I got, I didn't have any strength in my legs. That's what the problem was. You know. Now maybe if I stop doing it for a couple of days, I'll get strength in my legs from having done those. Those. Uh, yeah. But I'm not going to do them just before I'm going to go out and walk. You know. So anyway, hey, that's our theme song playing there. Boy, it's been a nice hour with you guys. Yeah. Um, sorry if I've been sneezing and and gasping and all of that, but you know, always good to have you here, uh, Tom. Tom's been around a lot lately, which yeah. is really nice. You know, it is nice. Yeah, good. It's nice to see a fellow Bay yeah. Area person here. And Kevin, what are you doing in your car right now? Are you delivering food? Thanks, Joe. Uh, I'm just sitting outside a store waiting. Just waiting for what? A delivery. Oh, a delivery. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank <laughs> you for, for an order. Waiting for an order. Thank you for being with us, Kevin. I appreciate it as always. You too, uh, Alan. Thank you for being with us. Uh, I want to thank, uh, of course, Charlie Wallace and Brian Neary 
And Tony, always good to have you here. And Ray, good to have you here tonight. Do it more often. We'll uh, see you all a little bit later. Uh, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, coming up next, it's... Uh, uh, oh, boy. I'm sniffling. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. Uh, it'll be the, uh, the intersection with uh, Amy Manuel, and she'll be taking your calls at... Uh, on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.